Nat Polish 4th of July Acrylic Nailer Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Polish. Hi everyone! In today's video I'm going to be doing my acrylic 4th of July or Independence Day themed design. In this one it's going to be a blue star in the center of the nail with red and white stripes. And this is not polished, this is not paint, this is all acrylic. So there is no little touching up, there is no nothing. It's all a design that's done with acrylic and then filed to reveal it, which is so much fun. If you've ever done one of these, it is such a... I don't know, it's such an awe moment when you finally get filed and you see the design. It's like the fa my favorite thing ever. It's so cool. I haven't done too many of these, so this is kind of a new thing for me. I hope you like it, and I'm going to be doing it with a couple new brushes that I just got from Alpha Brush, and I'll put links to those in the description box below, as well as give you a little more of my opinion on them in a moment. So I hope you like this design, and don't forget to click subscribe to see all my future videos as well. So here are those brushes that I mentioned, and these are three acrylic brushes. There is a number 10, a number 12, and a little 3D brush, and I'll put links to all these in the description box below. Um, so I've never used a brush larger than an eight, um, an acrylic brush that's larger than an eight. So I wanted to try ones that are a little bit bigger and see how that works for me. And I can tell you right off the bat, it is definitely a big difference. And I felt like I was getting huge amounts of acrylic every single time, which I expected, and sometimes that's going to be a good thing, I'm sure, but it was just, it's a little bit interesting. Uh, so I'm just gonna start, and to create the star, I'm gonna do three of the arms first. So I'm gonna do the top and then the bottom two. So if you think of this as a person, you're doing the head and the feet. So go ahead and just do that, and basically create a triangle, and then using an exacto an knife, cut away to create those bottom two arms or legs or feet or whatever you want to call them. So just use that exacto knife and carve that away. Now if you're doing this on a person, be extremely careful with that knife because you could very easily cut somebody. But since this is on a practice nail, I can be a little more a little rougher with it. But nonetheless, keep it in mind that you need to be very cautious when using such a sharp instrument. So then after you have those done and they have set just a second, you do want to give it a moment. And I did touch up all of the straight lines with that knife. Go ahead and add the last two arms. So just kind of add that acrylic going across. Let it set for a second so that it will hold its shape once you start messing around with it. And then pull those sides in a little bit with your brush again, just like I did before. And then go ahead and touch them up with this knife. So when you're doing this, you want to make sure that you do dunk your knife into some, I use the same blue acrylic powder, just so that you don't have acrylic sticking to it. I know I use these knives for craft projects and all sorts of things. So I wanted to make sure that it did stay acrylic free. So just make sure that you do kind of dip it in some powder to add a layer of non-stick, some non-stick coating. So then after that blue star has set 100%, make sure that it is not at all mobile anymore. I'm going to begin adding my white stripes. I'm going to start at the cuticle and add that first one. Like I just like before, I'm going to touch that up with the brush itself and then go through and just sharpen up the line with that little exacto knife. Like I said before, though, I am being a little bit more, um, abrasive and that's not the word. I'm being a little bit less, I'm being a little hasty with the knife. I'm not being very careful, which is something that you would want to definitely monitor if you're doing this on a person so that there's no, there's no bloodshed over this design. So I'm going to keep adding this and I'm going to go right over the top of that star just a little bit uh, here and there just because you do want to make sure that you fill in and go over the design 100% so there's no weird little gaps that show. So same thing, fix that up. And these acrylic brushes, um, they are I am surprised how nice they are. The actual brushes themselves are fantastic. The one thing I would like to say though is that the handle of them is wooden, which if you do a lot of acrylic stuff, I would highly recommend having a metal handle instead of a wooden handle. But that being said, if you're kind of like me and you want to test out a new size of acrylic brush, definitely these are not all of that expensive comparatively to some of the other brands that I have used. And so they're definitely something that, or if you're just starting out doing acrylic, you could definitely pick up these brushes as sort of a first run trial to see even how you like to use acrylic because I've heard so many people say that they have gotten acrylic because they've wanted to try it and then they've gotten it and realized it is just not for them, which definitely happens. This is a very interesting medium to work with, especially if you're not accustomed to it. And so if that's the case for you, definitely pick one of these up instead of shelling out a pretty large amount of money for a more expensive brush, at least, you know, until you know for sure. And so yeah, that's that's my piece on those. But other than just that handle problem, they are really nice. The bristles themselves are fairly fine, which is great for doing acrylic. I know that um, actually any, any sable brush, you wanna make sure that you have, the finer the sable, the better it is. So that's just that. So then after you have all of your white stripes in place, once again, make sure they were are 100% set. You wanna fill in 
all the little gaps that are all around everything with some red acrylic. So just fill in everything. Just go through and add that red acrylic. And if it does go over the top of the white stripes or the blue star, it does not matter in the slightest because we're going to file all that off anyway and it doesn't, doesn't matter. So now after all of that is set, once again, 100%, go ahead and start filing this design. So I am using a relatively coarse bit, one that I, in my head, I always think of it as being beastly. So take that bit and then just start going to town filing away acrylic. And I do do this methodically. Don't just actually just start ripping into it. You know, start at, I started at the cuticle and I worked my way down just filing. And I have this on a pretty high speed, but I'm using low pressure, which is kind of the key, I think, a lot of times with using an e-file is that people try to use too high or too hard of a pressure. And then that just causes you problems. If you need something to, if you need to remove acrylic faster, turn up the speed a little bit and then reduce some of your pressure that you're placing on the nail. You're going to find that you're probably going to have a lot better luck with that. So anyways, that is that little bit and as you can see it is so cool just to watch that design come to life when you're filing it is like the coolest thing ever I just I could do that all day it's so much fun but then I'm just going to take and I'm going to encase the nail so up until this point I was using that number 10 and then to encase this I decided I would give the number 12 a go I was feeling like yeah, I can handle a bigger brush even and I know it's so crazy some people use 18s or 20s even and I'm just thinking I don't know how that would go for me I like my little brush it is completely preference though so maybe I'll probably start using these a little bit here and there in some of my bigger designs we'll see so I'm just going to case that with a layer of clear acrylic after you have all that acrylic filed from the design beforehand it is extremely thin so you do really need to encase this because otherwise it is just going to break on you and it's not the smoothest thing because because when you're filing to reveal the design, you're not really filing it into a sturdy shape or a sound shape. You're filing it to look at what you got for the color. So it's not really, it's not really a thing that's finished then. So now I'm going to go through and I'm going to be filing this nail with the same bit, that same beastly bit, but it's on a lower speed because I'm not taking off nearly as much acrylic. I'm just filing it into shape to make sure that it is now the proper shape and has the proper nail structure and that it's thin at the cuticle and the sidewalls and all that. And I'm going to fix up the free edge because that was looking a little wonky. Just touch that up. And then I'm going to go through with a nice, really fine bit that I'm in love with. And I'm just going to be filing this just to make sure that the nail itself has a velvety smoothness that is really nice. And then using some pretty small little round bits, I'm going to go through and I'm going to carve away where I want those rhinestones to be at the tip. So I'm going to put three little indents into that red stripe and then two into the white stripe below it. And then one indent into the final white stripe. So it comes a little triangle, three, two, one, and then add a little bit of acrylic into the first red stripe hole and then place down your rhinestone. The reason I had to add those indents is because these rhinestones that I'm using have a pointed bottom so they need to go into the nail a little bit. So to do that I'm just going to make sure that there is a place for those little points to go. And the reason I'm using these over some other rhinestones is because oh my goodness they are so gorgeous. They are they have like this depth to them that I can't really explain very well but they're stunning and they're just they're my favorite so I had to make sure that I used those in this. So I'm just going to be filling those in with that little 3D brush and I haven't used that 3D brush for anything that's really 3D so I don't have too much of an opinion on it but I'm sure you will see me testing that out in future videos so definitely check back for that because if you're interested I can when I do give a more intensive review on it I can throw that link into the description box and that is it for this design I don't know if you guys are interested but the nails that I'm wearing the other fourth of July design is in the description box as well and that is also my birthday nails so if you are curious yeah that's what I'm wearing on my birthday in a couple days so I hope you like it and please share recreations with me on Facebook and Instagram and I'll see you my next video. Bye!